We are so excited because there is a man of God in the house that is anointed from the top of his hat. Oh, he took it off. The top of his head. <laughs> oh, just below his Wranglers. Yeah, your boots. They're just below your Wranglers. Oh, praise God. It's so great to have Bo and Kathy back in the house. And uh, so we welcome. Come on, brother. Got a green light now. That work? Oh, yeah, Hallelujah. <laughs> no, ah, they get you. <laughs> Praise God. Well, it's an awesome privilege to be here, especially since the hunters are back and I still get to preach. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm excited. How about you? Praise God. God is so awesome. Let me get all my fandango stuff out here glory to god you know uh let's start like this hallelujah you bring your bibles yeah. let's lift our bibles up say this is my bible this is, bible. This is the infallible word of god I am who my Bible says I am. I can do what my Bible says I can do. How, how many of you really believe that? Amen. Do we? Glory to God. You don't sound very excited about it. How many of you really believe that? Amen. All the way, right? Praise God. You know, there's, there's so many people in the world today trying to find themselves. Amen. Yeah. And what they mean by find themselves, they think uh, they need to go to a different place or change the people they're surrounded by. Sometimes a uh, young person will think well, they need to go to college or something to find themselves. Sometimes they get to college and they think that. Uh, they need to quit college for a little while and go find themselves. Amen. Have you all heard this? It's the truth, isn't it? Sometimes a person thinks he needs to leave his spouse to go find themselves. Amen. We hear of it all the time. But you know, you'll never find yourself in any of those places because the only place that a person can find themselves and truly find themselves is in the Word of God and nowhere else. Amen? Turn with me to uh, Luke chapter 4. You know, God has a mighty plan for each and every one of our lives. But the only place you're going to find that plan is in His Word. Amen. We found Luke chapter 4. I'd like to start reading in verse 16. It says, So he came to Nazareth where he had brought up, and his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now we're talking about Jesus, aren't we? And he stood up to read, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. I want everybody to take a close attention to that. Jesus found the place. In other words, he'd been to that place before, hadn't he? In other words, he'd already read Isaiah, and he found that place. 
And I've, I'm pretty sure he probably meditated on those scriptures until he come up with this. He found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and discovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book, and he gave it back to the attendant, and sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say, in other words, he had more to say than what we've got a copy of, he began to say, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Amen? Amen. So you could say that Jesus found himself in the Bible. Is that right? Is that what we just read? Jesus read Isaiah, and when he read Isaiah, it was quickened unto him, and he knew that this was him. He found his self in the Word of God. Amen? And that's the exact same place that we will find ourselves is in the Word. Amen? Amen. Turn with me to James chapter 1. In James chapter 1, I'd like to start reading in verse 21. It says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word. Everybody say doers. doers. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. So if you're not a doer of the word and you only come and hear the word, who are you deceiving? Yourself, Yourself right? For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and he goes away and immediately forgets what kind of a man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. The perfect law of liberty is this book right here. In other words, I might look in the mirror in the morning and think, oh, Lord, and, and choose to forget what I saw. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> but uh, when you look into the Word, you need to be a doer of that word and not a hearer only, for that one is blessed. And we find ourselves by looking in this word. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, if you'll turn there with me. In 2 Corinthians, Chapter 3, I'd like to start reading in verse 7. I'll read through verse 18. It says, But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the Spirit not be much more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. 
Therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not steadily at, could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded, for until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. In other words, that veil is taken away when we're born again, when we accept Jesus as our Lord. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, which we read that this is the liberty, this is the mirror that we need to be looking into, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Are we changed when we are doers of the Word, when we're looking in the Word, when we find ourselves in here, we are changed into the image of the Lord from glory to glory. Anybody else get that in their Word? I know it's in mine. You know, one of the greatest revelations that I've, uh, the Lord ever give me about the Word is this is, isn't just a history book. This isn't just a story about Moses and the things in the children of Israel. This isn't just a, a story about Jesus. This was written about me. Amen. This book was written about me, what my future is, where I came from, my history, my roots. When I was born again, I was born into this family, and this book is about me. The only place that I can find myself, the true me, is in this book. Amen? And it's the same with you. Let's start and look at some roots. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. I'll give you a hint. That's the first book. <laughs> Amen. Kathy, can I have that water? Oh, well, you don't scare me any. <laughs> okay, you want that back, honey? Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Has everybody found Genesis 1? Yeah. Was it hard to find? <clears throat> I'd like to start reading in verse 26. It says, Then God said, let us make man in our image. Now he says us and our, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are made in their image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion. That word dominion means to tread down. That is to subjugate. Well, uh, this cowboy had never used the word subjugate. I don't know about you. I looked it up. It means to bring under control, to govern as a conqueror. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So he's saying here that we are made in their image and their likeness, and it says, let them, them who? Adam and Eve, right? 
I said Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Adam and Eve. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Now that fruitful and multiply isn't just making babies and more babies and more babies. They were to multiply the garden of Eden across the face of the whole earth. God's blessing. They were to multiply those blessings. The blessing. Fill the earth and subdue it. That word subdue means to tread down, to conquer, to bring into bondage. Have we failed in that area? Yes. We surely have, haven't we? We were to have hard control of this earth. Now, maybe each of us individually might not be able to take hard control over the whole earth, but we can sure take hard control over our surroundings and the earth and the things around us in the name of Jesus. Amen? Isn't that true? That's a good place to start anyway. How about taking hard control of your household, your children? Amen or oh me, is that right? So many people are trying to be buddies to their children instead of parents. Hallelujah. And I'll guarantee you it's a big mistake. That's extra, by the way. <laughs> Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. That's a powerful statement, isn't it? Can you see how we were created? We we're created in His image and His likeness. Now, we can look around the room and say, well, if I'm in His image, you ain't. <laughs> right? In other words, we all look different. But God is a spirit. We are a spirit being. Amen? Amen? We are a spirit, we live in a body, and we have a mind, will, and emotions, our soul. So we are spirit beings. So we're made a spirit being in the likeness of Almighty God. What does that mean? We are speaking spirits. Amen. Amen. We're the only speaking spirits on this earth. Think about that a minute. Now, the cows, they make noises. Dogs make noises. Everything makes a noise. But none of them go over to the cafe and uh, chew the fat. <laughs> Amen. They don't have that ability to just uh, chat about the weather or the old cows over in that pasture. <laughs> right? Only we do. We were given that choice and that ability we are speaking spirits created in God's image and God's likeness. Now, we are not gods. Everybody got that clear? We'll never be all-knowing. We'll never be all-powerful. Only with the authority that he's given us. But we are created in his image. We are creative speaking spirits. In other words, we create our surroundings and the things that we live by the things that we speak out of our mouths. Amen or oh me, I'm preaching a lot better than you guys are saying amen. <laughs> Am I doing something wrong up here? <laughs> Hallelujah. So can you get that image? We're created in the image of God. And just to show you how powerful that is, the first assignment for Adam 
we can look over here in Genesis chapter 2 and read in verse 19. It said, Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Now, uh, that sounds like he just went through there. Donkey, horse, cow, dog. No, that word there, name, in the Hebrew means as a mark or a memorial of individuality. By implication, honor, authority, and character. So he didn't just name the animals. He gave them animals who they were. He gave those animals their character. How did he do that? With his mouth. Amen. You ever wonder why a border collie wants nothing except to bite a cow? <laughs> Herd. Right? You know why them little dogs do nothing but yip? <laughs> They're created that way. It's Adam's fault. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I said that one for my sister, but she's not here. Turn with me to Psalms chapter 8. Wow, water. What a great invention. Psalms chapter 8. I'd like to start reading in verse 1. It said, Our Lord... O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants you have ordained strength because of your enemies. Out of their what? Out of their mouth he ordained or set up or appointed strength because of our enemies that we may silence the enemy and the avenger we are the ones that speak god's word out of our mouth amen on the earth when i consider your heavens the works of your fingers the moon and the stars which you have ordained What is man that you are mindful of him? Isn't that quite a question? Who are we? Well, we'd already looked at our roots, didn't we? What is man that God is mindful of us? The son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower. The word here says angels. But if you'll notice, there's a little asterisk beside that word angel, isn't there? That means if you look down in the margin, that the actual Hebrew word there is Elohim. In other words, God himself. So I scratch that out of there. Angel doesn't fit there. We're not a little lower than the angels. Jesus is not a little lower than the angels. We're a little lower than God himself. Amen? That's powerful. Are we finding ourselves in here? And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. So we were created to do what? Have dominion over what? The works of God's hands. Is that a high place? Isn't that awesome? Are we finding ourselves? I'm going to read that again. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. 
You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beast of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Well, powerful. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. I've been hooked on Ephesians chapter 1 for, I think I even preached about it last time I was here. Amen. And uh, that is so good, I'm just going to start in Ephesians 1 verse 3, and I'm going to read for nearly the whole chapter. Amen. God's Word's good, isn't it? It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every, everybody say every, every, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him and love. Well, when you go to ch checking where your roots begin, you, you can't even do that with, uh, I don't know, Ancestry.com. You can't go before you were in the womb. You can't go before, in other words, this is, the, is uh, where you find yourself. Having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. You know, something kind of interesting, and I don't know if it has anything to do with it or not, but we're going to be talking about an inheritance down here pretty quick. Do you know that uh, if you adopt a child, you cannot disinherit them by law? You, it can't be done. Now, you can disinherit your own children. You can disinherit all of them. But you cannot disinherit an adopted child. Isn't that powerful? Where are we at? In six? Having predestined us to the adoption as sons by Jesus Christ, to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him, everybody say, in him. In him, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. In other words, none of this was done against God's will. We were created this way because it was God's will for us to be this way that in the dispensation of the fullness of the time he might gather together in one place all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. So it's talking about us obtaining an inheritance. Let's Put something in here because we're coming right back to Ephesians 1, but let's just go look at this inheritance. Okay, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Don't lose your spot there. It's just back one chapter. Galatians chapter 3. I'll start reading in verse 26. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. 
And if you are Christ, how many in here are of Christ? If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. What's interesting is that word child there, the first definition of that word child is non-speaking. Now, we are speaking spirits, aren't we? Do we have the choice to speak or not to speak? We do, don't we? Non-speaking child or an infant does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. Everybody say all. all. So we're master of all but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, this word children is the same word up there as child. When we were children, non-speaking, infant, immature, babes, were in bondage under the elements of the world. I put it under the demonic influence of the world. Now, how did we get under the demonic influence of the world? Because we're babes, non-speaking, infants. How would we get out from under the bondage of the world? Grow up. Amen? Grow up. Start speaking. Thank you, sweetheart. Start speaking to our surroundings and our situations in life. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, or my Father, or Daddy. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of who? God. An heir of God through Christ. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Everybody still with me? Yeah. Romans chapter 8. I'll start reading in verse 14 through 18. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Boy, I ought to be shouting about this. Joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. I want you to picture that. Being glorified together with Christ. You got that image? I don't think so. <laughs> glorified together. Is this in the Word? Yes. This isn't the book of Bo. This is the Holy Word, isn't it? Yes, yeah. glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory 
which shall be revealed in where? In us. Hallelujah. In us. Let's go back to Ephesians. Did you learn that? Lose it? Ephesians 1. I'll start reading in verse 11 again. In him also we have or obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you were also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. That's powerful, isn't it? It's a good, it's a done deal. That inheritance is sealed. Guaranteed until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, did not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Now, this is a prayer of Paul, and I'm going to read it. So I'm going to read it like a prayer over us. Amen. That the Lord of our that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that we may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places far above everybody say far above far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named that's awesome. Is cancer a name? Name above that. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And you, point to your neighbor and say, you, and you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom all also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of our mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. Can anybody relate to that? Amen. Amen. I know I can. But God. Everybody say, but God. Yes. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So if Jesus was raised, let's go back to where he was raised because we were raised with him, right? So let's go back to verse 21, chapter 1, verse 21. Far above... Everybody say far above. far above. All principality and power and might and dominion 
and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Is that a high place? Glory to God. It is, isn't it? It says if, don't turn there, but in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse 21 says, He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Are we seeing ourselves? Now, I've done this demonstration before when I was here, I'm pretty sure, and I, I'd like to do it again because I think it's so... I need room back here. Would you come and sit in this one? Now, this is the Father God <laughs> sitting <laughs> on the throne. <laughs> Amen? Now, he's the creator of all things. Is that true? He made all things. There's nothing that was made that wasn't made by him. Debbie, would you come? So where is Jesus seated? Where does it say Jesus is seated? At the right hand of the Father. With all power and authority. Is that right? Where did Jesus get that authority? From the Father. Seated at his right hand, the, the hand of power. That authority was given to Jesus. Come in, honey, you want to come sit up here? <laughs> Represent us. So where does it say that we're seated? With Jesus. That we were raised together with Jesus. That's seated at the right hand of the Father. Again, you're not part of the Godhead. Even though we share the throne with Jesus, we share that throne in authority. Something really interesting to me is we have God the Father, God the Son, or God the Word. Where's the Holy Spirit? In us. So how long is he in us? Forever. So to complete the Godhead, we are needed as a speaking spirit. We are the voice of God on the earth. Amen? Amen? Amen. We are the voice of Jesus on the earth through the spirit. So when God wants something done or said, it comes down to here that the Holy Spirit will speak to our spirit that we might speak it forth. When Jesus needs to say something, if we can't find it in the Word, it is spoken through who? The Holy Spirit, which is in us, but the Holy Spirit does not have a mouth here on the earth except for us. We are the mouth of the Holy Spirit. We are the mouth of the Father God. We are the mouth of the Lord Jesus. Is anybody getting an image of themselves? What an image. We need to dwell on this. Amen. Is this the position that we pray from? Is this the position far above all dominion, all of that, that given the name that is above every name, the name of cancer, do we take this position and speak to it? 
We need to. Amen? Thank you. I know we did that before, but we need to keep that before us. It's powerful. You know, if the way you think and believe now is not producing positive things in your life, it's time to change the way you think. Amen? Amen? I, I not, not about other things, but about yourself. Amen? Amen? It's time you change the way you think about yourself. I know God's Word says not to think more highly than you ought, but how high should you ought? I don't know if that's proper English or not, but <laughs> amen? In other words, that's not telling us to, to bump us down. It's tell, now, don't put ourselves above God, but above all power and dominion. Yeah, above. Every name that is named, cancer, disease, poverty. Are we supposed to be below that? People say that. Well, I'm a little under the weather. Well, get out from under there. What are you doing? Amen. What are you doing under there? Speak to it. Amen. From that position. You know, a lot of you might be sitting here thinking, you know, I know the Bible's true. But what I just saw doesn't seem real to me. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever acted like it was the truth? Amen or oh me, somebody say something. Is that the truth? If this doesn't seem real to you, have you ever, that word is the truth. Have you ever acted like it was the truth? Have you ever spoke like it was the truth? Have you ever told somebody the truth? We've just found ourselves, haven't we? You know, there's so much more about you in this Word. So much more about me in this Word. And what God wants us to do. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in our immediate surrounding. It's kind of like a cult. You know, when you first take it into the round pen, you know, out of fear, it starts running circles in that pen. And looking out at everything that it left behind, everything that's out there. And here I am, stuck in here, going round and round, right? But you know, there comes a time when that Colt's getting just a little bit winded. And eventually that colt kind of turns and looks inside. And for the very first time, that colt realizes there's something more to this than I've known before. Amen? But that colt still thinks that you're trying to kill him. But you know, that's not the truth. Because when you take that colt in there, it's because you have a vision for that horse. You have a plan for that horse in life to do things that that horse would never do out in that pasture. Amen. Whether you take that, you have a vision of that horse going into the cutting pen, that isn't something that just comes natural. But you have a plan. In other words, you know the whole picture. That horse is only thinking of what's happening to it right at that moment. The only place you're going to find the plan for your life is in this word. Because God has an awesome plan for you. God has an awesome plan for each and every one of us. What we need to do is turn in. 
Look at him. Find ourselves and step in to that place. You can start in your homes, in this church. Amen? You know, he comes up here and preaches the word for the equipping, I like to say outfitting of the saints because that's our scripture for our ministry. So he's up here to equip you to do the work of Christ. Amen. Are you doing that? We need to start growing up. We need to open our mouths and start speaking to the situations and the things in our lives and command them to change because of the truth. It'll change your world when you set in this place. It'll change your life forever. Amen? Do you have a choice? Just like your salvation. Your salvation was done 2,000 years ago. How do you receive it? By faith and by choice. Your healing, it was done for you 2,000 years ago. How do you receive that healing? By faith and by your choice. So how do you ascend into this position? By faith and by your choice. I encourage you today to dare to believe God's word and step in to what you were created to be and created to do on this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. God is so awesome. Did anybody get anything out of this? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Lord. I feel like there's something more here. It's not. I'm done with the sermon. Amen. Look at you. Praise you, Lord. You have something? Yeah. Pastor, do you have something? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Amen. God is good. Shut this off. I'm not, I'm not Mike, so I have to go back to this one. There's something that was said this morning that just took my spirit and just empowered it with not just the understanding, but wisdom that I want to bring into revelation. We've been talking about this long, a long time. But in Ephesians chapter 2, Brother Bo was speaking, but God. Amen. 
Now, we have always here, every time we read a scripture, it says, but God, we emphasize, but God. There is no one like our God. But in verse 4 there it says, But God who has rich, who is rich in mercy because of his great love for us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us. Oh, but God. Oh, but God made us to get to live together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. Now listen, but God raised us up together and made us sit we sang a song this morning i'm yeah. seated at the right hand of god in christ jesus what a glorious thing of understanding to know and understand who we are in christ not on our own we can't do it on our own only in christ are we made to sit right here right next to Jesus who is sitting next to the Father and he says I am in you now go and share look at verse 7 that in the ages to come he Jesus showed the exceeding riches of his grace in his like kindness toward us in Christ Jesus his kindness toward us we've been talking about the light that's what I'm saying this is just the power of his word is so mighty. And it gives us such a great ease in my spirit. It gives me a great ease that no matter what he asks me to do, I'm capable of doing because it's not me doing it. I'm not the light. Jesus is the light that is living in each and every one of us. And it's his light that is shining. Just like the word his brother's been talking about all morning. It's the word it's living. It's living word. And we are speakers of the living word. Are we speaking to bring things down or speaking evil about? Or are we speaking with the light of Christ, the love of God? Oh, but God, who is rich in love and mercy, that you and I can share the good news of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You know, I told you this morning, you're seated at the right hand. Don't get up. Get up. But that doesn't mean we don't get up each and every morning and go out and share the word of Jesus Christ. Because there's people out there that need to hear it. And you have that living word in you. You may think you don't. Well, I'm not a good speaker. Well, neither was I. And I'm still not. But boy, let me tell you, he who is in me is greater than anything I could ever imagine. And I want to share that with other people. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. Glory. Glory. That's his word. That's his word. And we need to, something the Lord's been putting on my spirit while he was talking. Is, you know, he's provided that place for us. But we have to ascend into that place it's a done deal but we have to choose and ascend in to that place far above far above amen I've shared with you many a times Isaiah 55 8 I had so many questions God gave me that verse and it says that my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and you know so many times as I received that I received it with joy but then I kept saying to myself are you saying that I can't be like you that I can't think like you that I can't act like you and he told me go back and read from the beginning what God is saying come up here with me Think from here. Act from here. Quit looking up and start looking down on your situation. And now apply what he, is, he has already afforded to us to put into action. Now I understand Isaiah 55 eight. 
because that's where God wants me, seated at his right hand. Amen. Being his voice and his feet and his hands, his eyes, to share the goodness of God's creation. And that was created in Christ Jesus. Yeah. I have liberty just for a minute. To, Go for it. Uh, you know, I've been looking around the room because sometimes the Lord will point somebody out to me that either has a word or, or something, and, and I haven't found that. But I thought there was something else. Or the Lord usually points out somebody that's in pain and needs healing in their body. But he hasn't pointed anybody out to me. Okay? But if you are here and you're in pain or you need hands laid on you for sickness or disease or anything else, just raise your hand, please. Raise your hand. Come up. Kathy, when you want to help, let's lay hands on. Go ahead and lay hands on these for healing. Is there another hand here? Right here. Hmm. You're fine. Just sit there. All you have to do is receive. Can you do that sitting down? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heal in Jesus. I speak healing and wholeness to you now in Jesus' name. I speak this body to fall in line with the healing. You're feeling different, aren't you? I'm feeling so blessed. <laughs> I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful God to put me here. Yes. Yes. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. came from a place where we're just the people were different. Or I'm not going to get into that. It's yes. Too, it's a wonderful story. That doesn't story. matter, does it? You're here now. Found a home. God bless you. Hallelujah. We walk by faith and nothing else. See, the Word of God is truth. And what it says is that you are already healed. Not you're going to be healed. I'm waiting on my manifestation. The manifestation of healing came 2,000 years ago when God sent His only begotten Son to come and take all the sins of man upon him. Sickness is a sin. It's sin nature working in this world. And so if we truly believe the word of God and the power of God in and through his word by the finished work of Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the living word, it's done. Well, I don't feel it. Well, quit feeling things and start looking up and receiving what God has already blessed you with. Get out of here and come down to here and sit at the right hand of the Father and watch him pour out such blessings, healing, prosperity, 
healing of things that are happening within your family, things that are happening with our world? Are we believing that our world can change, that this United States can change again to a God-fearing country? I do, because that's the God I serve. He is faithful. He does not change. Whew. And all I can, yes, Eric, you have something? We uh, often make the assumption that everybody here has received Christ into their lives. The Spirit's just been speaking to me. There's somebody here, I think, today who, who knows God. Maybe, maybe you are, like me, brought up Catholic and you believe in God, but you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's just been on my heart all day today. And so I don't want us to miss that. I don't want you, if this, if this is you, I don't want you to miss out all this that Bo's been talking about today. The, the healing here is all in Christ. That Holy Spirit comes and takes up residency in us when we accept Christ into our lives. Maybe you were baptized as an infant. Have you accepted Christ into your life as a mature man or woman? Today's that day. And so I just, it was just on my heart. If there is somebody here and you have not received Christ into your life, come on up. Receive. Pastor Gerald or I would just love to walk you to the Lord. Okay? So if that's you, don't be shy. Now is your chance. Maybe, maybe that person's not here today, but maybe it's somebody that one of you knows. Somebody on the internet. Yeah, thank you. I forget about that. Thank you. Right? Man. Or if it's somebody that you know in your life that you're just aching for, there's something stirring you right now. That friend of mine, that brother of mine, that niece of mine, whoever it is, service is over. Get on that phone and call them reach out. I don't know. God is just stirring this on me. And so I'm just speaking to y'all, just from the Lord. So, amen. 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 We have a last song, but I'm not going to sing it. Oh. It's my song. It's not Sharon's song, so I'm not cutting Sharon out. <laughs> oh, how I love you, Lord. Love you more and more each day. I think we need to sing it. No. Oh, how I love you, Lord. You who saved me, who sacrificed yourself for me. Oh, how I love you, Lord. God loves you. We love you. And for those that are on the internet watching this, if that was you that uh, felt the spirit moving, that you need to have that change in your life. You need to start anew. You need to have something that's, as Bo was saying, you, now that you're in the round pen, quit looking out to the wilderness because God has called you home and he is building for you a mansion, not a pup tent. <laughs> I just lived in a pup tent for a week. But praise God, I'm here again. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, God loves us. And he loves each and every one, all of his creation. No matter how evil that person could be, God can change the heart. Amen. And he can do it through you and I. So we love you. Stay blessed. Stay anointed. Stay empowered. That's what this is all about. It's speaking to you because it's your book. God wrote it just for you. And he put each and every one of us right there in the right place for us to recognize who we are in Christ Jesus.
God bless you all. We love you. Have a blessed week.